Okay, the Hangouts on Air. Lady Ada, what's going on here? This is where we all talk about our hair dye. <laughs> yeah. This is where we show yeah. up our electronic projects. Uh, we're here with Mitch, who is going to be saying awesome stuff about your project. You That's just right. love electronics. This How long have you been doing electronics for? Like 40 years, 3 years? Oh, all my life. All your yeah. life. Yeah. And he's like 45 years old, so yeah. like... Oh, uh, 58. This is, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a show and tell, and then we have Ask an Engineer. Mitch is going to be on, on uh, Ask an Engineer well, but this is my favorite time where we get to see what people make. So, yeah. starting with some Adafruit team members. Tony, what are you working on this week? Hey, yeah, so I'm looking at little LCD displays. So this is the Illatec 9341, uh, and it's a real nice little display. There's an Arduino shield, uh, but I've got the breakout, and I'm getting it to work with the Raspberry Pi and the BeagleBone Black. So I'll show you real quickly with the uh, BeagleBone Black. So here is uh, the display, and you can see it's a pretty nice uh, picture of a cat, a uh, nice you know, color representation. <laughs> Uh, really easy to use, so it just uses an SPI connection to the BeagleBone Black. Uh, it runs at about 8 megahertz or so. Uh, and this is nice because you don't need to mess with any kernel drivers. You're not creating a frame buffer. You know, you're just talking to this in Python uh, code. So you can add multiple displays and go wild with it. Uh, and I put a button in, so when you press the button, you get different cat pictures. So <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> Someone is starting uh, a Kickstarter right now. This is Instagram. <laughs> If you have a display, why not put a cat picture on it? You know, that's the general rule. <laughs> so that's it, pretty much it. I'm going to clean it up and turn it into a little Python library Python. that you can use to um, use the display like this. And the great thing is, because this uses SPI, you oh. can have a lot of these displays. So, yeah, you know, I can imagine getting, like, six or eight, you know, maybe even ten displays if you're really crazy, wire them all up and, you know, have them do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. Uh, so it's real simple and easy to use it. And it's just using the Python imaging library right now to uh, load images. The great thing is, you know, because this is BeagleBone Black, you've got Linux, so you have a lot of memory. You can use tons of libraries to deal with whatever image format you want. Uh, it's not nearly as constrained as, like, an Arduino. Yeah. All right. So, okay. and then one quick thing I wanted to plug, too. So well, if you got latest, this is the latest issue of Make Magazine, uh, issue number 40. All and right. uh, there's a cool project in there that I actually did. Uh, it's the... The face recognition treasure chest. Oh, yeah. So yeah, it's good stuff. It's uh, in the new issue of Make. So you have check diamonds, it out. Apparently, three D printed diamonds. All right. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Tony, and we look forward to your GitHub and learning guide and cat photos. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next up, Noah and Pedro. How's it going, guys? Hey, hey everybody. everybody. Happy evening. Yes, getting ready for another action-packed 3D Thursday tomorrow. And yeah. uh, what are you working on? What's going on? We we release the 1.75 filament upgrade for the Taz. Yay! This is great. Okay, so let's switch over. Right. Yeah. So one of the first things that people might have noticed when they bought it from us, if they got some Ninja Flex as well, is that the filament diameter is different. So what we yeah. did there is simply update the wall thickness of the old extruder to the new 175, which is pretty much more standard, I think, and uh, updated the um, regular hot extruder as well as the flexi extruder is also updated. A couple tubes that you have to get, we link all to all the project or to all the uh, parts that you're going to need on learn.adafruit.com, and we also offer the pr updated profiles for uh, 175 um, extrusion since the you know the gear ratio is different with the diameter. You're gonna have yeah. to slow it down a little bit. <laughs> And uh, temperature, um, because it uh, t requires less temperature to heat up, uh, we got all the updated profiles on that. So about two weeks of uh, figuring all that stuff out. But we did all the hard work for you guys. Um, and <laughs> checked out all the parts you extruded it so they don't have to. Um, <laughs> yeah. One of the things that um, uh, that's worth mentioning is the TAS is the only fully open source uh, FSF certified 3D printer, and you guys are doing a lot of uh, cool things. Oh, there goes your owner oh, back. Uh, you guys are doing a lot of cool things that remind me of the early days. Now, early days, funny of 3D printing. You're hmm. making things with 3D printers to make the 3D printers better. You're um, sharing all the files. You're putting them in places where people can hack, mod, and do stuff. And uh, the cool thing is uh, the the contraption-like nature of 3D printers um, is uh, getting easier. To uh, to deal with, <laughs> so yeah, there's more people doing stuff, and there's you guys making these things, and you're you're not alone. You can actually there's a pretty big community of people hacking these. Yeah, we love giving back. The, the upgrades always make our work easier. You know, it's we're building it to make things, not to you know. Yeah. All right, and what are you working on next week? 
Next week, uh, finally, I got the mini oots ready. So, okay. Uh, Small Very cool tutorial on yeah hooking it up with iOS. Like little, if you had like a like a like a foot pedal, but it's like yeah. a toe pedal, it's like a toe pedal box. Like, totally looks like it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that is the Adafruit open source music controller. So we will see cool. that. There'll be more from Colin with that later. Yeah. Oh yeah. The Colin band. All right, guys. Excellent production quality. So you guys are looking good. Yeah. <laughs> motor. Yeah, all right. I want to spin that little thing. Okay, next up, Lewis, what you got cooking? Hi, so I've been working with circuit board etching, so I'm going to show you what I've done. I'm still learning KiCad, so, oh, but it looks like my video lights. Okay, can you see it? Okay, it's, one it's second. So dark. It's so dark, Lewis. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I <Come> get back. <laughs> come back to the light. <laughs> I do, do not know what's... Do well, you want to come I'll... back to you? Um, this I is can... inside the etchant. Oh, there you are. <laughs> so You're back. Hello. The first one I tried, I, the copper got on the... Be or the etchant got on the front, but it did really well on the back. And so okay. basically this is an ATtiny tiny breakout board. Hmm, cool. And... I've got like pins here or here, and then I've got power input here, and then I've got a 7805 regulator right there. And then I also made, which I still have to solder up, an AVR programmer shield Ooh. for AT megas and AT tinies. But on the back, the etchant ate too much away, so I'm like having to fix everything with wrapping wire. Yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a challenge. One of the things that helps is warming up the um, etchant, like you... Oh, a really? Heater. Yeah, you can get immersion heaters. They're like, you know, they're sometimes for heating liquid. Like, don't use something for food, obviously, but... Um, yeah. You yeah, can an use aquarium, an aquarium heater. Aquarium heaters, like some exotic fish need warmer water. And you just warm it up, even up to like 10 or 20 degrees above uh, Fahrenheit, above um, like room temperature, just get a little bit warm. Another thing that helps is bubbling air through it to keep it agitated. It's called like agitation. So get an aquarium bubbler as well, and then just put the tubing, just like uh, poke holes in the tubing, so that it, it has a lot of bubbles, and that'll help keep it. It'll it'll ha it'll etch much faster and much more evenly. That's cool. I've never heard of that. So thanks. Yeah, this is like direct skills. Yeah, from the Lady Ada. I used to do all my prototypes with um, an etching system. Yeah, when I met uh, Lady Ada, uh, she etched the first Minty Boost with this setup, and yeah. we had this vat of acid basically for a really long time, and we just keep it in the bathroom. Yeah. So the very first cool. minty boost was made this way. So yeah, I used to use press eye. and peel blue and a dowel. Yeah. You use a dowel to press it on to the, the PCB. That's the best technique. The laminator thing is bullshit. Anyone who says it's a laminator, <laughs> they're lying. If they use a laminator, use a dowel. All right. Okay, well, Wood. Then, well, what do you do with the uh, the used etching, though? You recycle it. Yeah. You can you reuse it. We've had we had the same etching for like three I years. I had it for like two or three years. Yeah. yeah, eventually you have to like you can dry it. You you let it um, dry so, out, and then you it's just crystal. Yeah. yeah, then you can toss the crystal. Which is when I moved, I was like I couldn't. There's no way for me to transport like a gallon or two across town. So I just did. And I was also not etching as much anyway. So okay, Lewis. As always, email support at for to come. You get the S scene on the show and tell sticker. There's plenty of room on that board for that. Oh, yeah, thanks. All right. Okay, next up. Uh, Chinmay, Chinmay, hello, how are you? I'm at your mic and show us your project. Oh, you get mic? Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Um, so we, d we were uh, in a hackathon. So we're, in, we're from Singapore, and we did a hackathon here recently. Both of us are kind of new to hardware. Uh, and we, we had this problem where we had a letterbox, uh, which always uh, we have to check. You know, you know, this is 2014, but we still have like a snail mail letterbox. And we thought, what, what's a way to sort of, you know, automate this? So we built a mock letterbox from a sh from a shoebox, and we decided to prototype a system where we could sense mail coming in, uh, and use uh, an Android phone to get uh, a, a nice notification to see if, uh, you know, we have new mail. So, so this side is the postman, and uh, this side uh, the owner collects it. So let's try it. So uh, the postman opens it. Uh, maybe we can uh, show the notification uh, here. Uh, the yeah. And uh, then you try to like sort of put your mail in, and then you have one delivery. It's a very simple <laughs> thing. And then you sort of open it from here, and uh, there you go. Yeah. You have mails cleared to zero, zero delivery. 
So it's a very simple thing. Uh, maybe we could show. Yeah, let's show the inside. That's that's way more interesting. Um, so it's based on a simple Arduino, um, two LDRs. Yeah, this uh, is the Arduino. This is the LDR towards the postman. This is the other one towards the owner. Uh, it's and it's all from Ada Prod, right? Yeah, yeah. This is a this is a proximity sensor, uh, which kind of uh, checks uh, how much mail is there, and this is the Bluetooth uh, LED. Shield, yeah, that's the Bluetooth LED shield, which, which communicates. Ah, great. Okay. What's funny is when you buy more Adafruit stuff, or when you get your Show and Tell sticker, <laughs> this box is going to alert you. I know. I see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll know when we get the sticker. Yeah. 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 So we're still having some problems doing a lot some of the calibration because it, since we're you know it's based on light it's you know we yeah. don't know how much light it's going to be so I think it's still a work in progress. Um, also the, the the sensor for proximity is a little bit too not not granular enough. I mean it's too much the distance between the sensor and, yeah. the, and the mill. So it doesn't really sense if we have two packages or one package or. Uh, Single so, paper is very hard to. Yeah, adapt. if you have really thin package, sometimes it doesn't even notice that you have a new package. So we're still uh, trying to figure out how to do that calibration and, and get that right. But uh, and of course, is this whole masking tape thing is just a prototype thing. We do want to like test it out right yeah, now. Yeah, we want to we want to try it because this is an itch we want to scratch because this is just yeah. you know a letter box that we need to check all the time. It's like why can't my phone tell me that? It's, you know, <laughs> That's I've got great. It. All right, well, uh, take a photo when you get it to a good spot, and then also. Um, uh, don't forget to email support at adafruit.com. You get an SEN on the show and tell sticker that you can put on your mailbox. Check out the course. Ah. We have the Arduino boxes. Yeah. yeah. You reuse yeah. the Arduino boxes. Yeah. Yes. We, we were at a 24 hour hackathon, so we didn't Same have too. anything to, to prop up the breadboard. Yeah. So we like, you know, just put whatever we had. We had a couple of Arduino boxes we yeah. just put in there. In the future, you'll have to cook your food over Arduino boxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we have enough of them to, to, yeah. to, to cook food, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. Us maker folk, we eat all of the Arduino box. <laughs> so um, we're going to, uh, we got a couple more people in, so we're going to do a little bit of a speed round, but uh, we're going to go to Brian next. Hey, Brian, show us your project. Hey, how are you guys this evening? Good. Well, I made, some, made a lot of progress on my D-Star heads-up display, and, uh, well, here it is. Okay. Oh, wow. The, uh, the LED... Well, the OLED display, right now it's showing uh, an incoming incoming call or incoming traffic, but um, when, it's, when there's no traffic coming in or going out, it will show the reflector that it's linked to. Okay. And the LED is, it, it basically indicates the status of an APRS tracker, uh, position tracker that I've built into it. Great, cool. That looks so professional. The OLED is so nice. Yeah. I love Super OLEDs. Chris. All right. Yeah, the, uh, the rectangular hole could have been better, you know, if you look closely enough at it. But it's, as as far as hobbyist stuff goes, it's pretty good. Yeah, this looks great. It has a nice enclosure. All right, well, this is your updated project. Um, it's at, it's at, you're finished with it now, right? This looks like it's done. Almost. I mean, most Almost. of the work that's most of the work that's left is in the software, and um, there's a little bit of polishing there. And I've got the the other end of this, the business end, is currently sprawled on my floor right now. So I need to, uh, you know, put that into a convenient container. Okay. That, that's, that's pretty much it. All right. Well, you still get to ask seen on the show and tell sticker. Excellent project. This is really cool. Good work. You good uh, use of the OLED. All right. <laughs> We're gonna move CQ, on. CQ, CQ. Yeah, we're gonna go to <laughs> Ankit and then Andrew and then Lon and then we're gonna see Scott always has music, so we're gonna save him for the end for the, the music the music uh, so uh, Ankit, hello. Hey guys. Hey, show so, us your project. So basically Chirag and I were to kind of teach a class at a makerspace here uh, in Boston called uh, Artisan Asylum. It's a pretty big makerspace. Yeah. Um, and so we were teaching there, we were planning to teach on robotics, um, and we were basically looking around for multiple robot platforms when we stumbled upon the Zumo bot, a Zumo robot. Um, yeah, basically we in our store. It's a cool bot. Exactly. So um, we basically identified that this is um, in form of a shield that you can just use an Arduino on top of, and you get access to all the sensors that are on top of it. It has a buzzer, a button, a reflectance sensor array, accelerometer, and all those stuff. Um, and basically, from that point on, we basically realized how robust it is, and we basically uh, had some of the stuff that uh, we worked yeah. on. So what we decided that uh, we wanted to take a different approach. Uh, typically, when we when we get the robot, uh, we just go into the hardware 
And when it doesn't work, we attach the Arduino IDE serial debugger and try to debug what, what, this, what is the sensor value coming in and all that. But since we are here in MathWorks, uh, we had access to MATLAB and Simulink and, uh, and this is a great software. So what we decided to do was we tried to do something reverse and we tried to model this in a Simulink. And what that gave us is, uh, if Ankit just simulates it, is we just have a simple model for the robot and that's because it's so consistent. We could just model it and tune our PID controller to follow the line in simulation. And once it starts doing that, you just download the code directly that this generates onto the robot and follows the nice line. Nice That's great. <laughs> oh, this is cool. And this is your line following robot. So you simulate yep. it, and then yes. it, it, it looks like it's pretty much doing what the simulation did. So you this is like the first time a simulation actually worked out in real life. Yeah. <laughs> it's groundbreaking. And so what we wanted, we wanted these uh, uh, libraries that we ended up building to get access to all the sensors on the ZoomoBot for people to use. So we have put out all these libraries for people to use um, uh, and try it out on their own. Uh, I think we also have a blog post on Adafruit on the tutorial on how to use this and the library. Yeah. Um, so I hope all the folks who use this get as much fun as we had uh, yeah. using and, this. And, and people and artisans in the class really had the same reaction. Wow, simulation and hardware actually can yeah. work together. So that's we actually fun. ended up having the same course here for makers and mathworks. A lot of us here, we ended up having the same course here and kind of doing simulation for other kind of boards as well. All right. Well, um, there's two of you. So, well, there's actually three of you with the robot. So, email <laughs> support at adafruit.com, and you'll get it as seen on the show and tell sticker. Yeah, cool. robot. Oh, this is on the sumo bot. Somebody's done that. Super already. cute robot. Yeah. And you're going to teach classes on this at Artisans? Yes. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did two already. We're going to do another one in summer after summer, I guess. Okay. Cool. All right. Thanks Next a lot, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Andrew. I'll meet your mic and show us your robot. I see a robot somewhere. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Good. Hey. Uh, this is my project here. This is uh, Pablo. He's a robot, and he talks. Uh, <laughs> what, is he, what, is, what does he say? Well, we can talk. We can say hello. <laughs> um, he'll throw random insults now and then. He's kind of like the anti-social robot. Oh, that's funny. Okay. But well, it's using... Robot. Python on a server that uh, interprets things through AIML, figures out what you're saying. If there's a planned response, it'll send it back. It's using uh, the Bluetooth EasyLink. Uh, it's got a couple of Neo pixel rings that I can control. Uh, it can control, too, as well. So in certain responses, you can give it uh, um, things to change its color of its eyes. I don't know if you'll be able to see that at all, but... Uh, so voice control through a web form. Right now, I got a little web form right. working. The eyes. Right. What a cool robot. Yeah, I can just say blue eyes. And when I do that, it should. Look at that. Yeah. Oh. Flicker his eyes. Um, yeah. It can say certain things. So uh, either text. I need to buy. <laughs> He said, hi, Adabot. I don't know. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey. Um, there's a few planned responses, but you can tweak the personality. And uh, yeah, it's just sending it over the serial. Um, I can put them anywhere. It's super nice to be able to program uh, with the easy link over Bluetooth. Uh, love it. It's uh, actually an entry into the Hackaday Prize, too. So it's all okay. open. Okay. All open source. Everything's documented. It's a Lady Ada is a judge. And, um, but I, can't, I have to be partial. Um, no, coming on the show, I talked to Brian from Hackaday, and uh, I said, hey, you should encourage people to come on the show and tell, and he's like, oh, that's a really good idea. So okay. uh, congratulations. If you send us some photos and links and stuff, we'd love to feature the bot on... Um, yeah, he's got a homepage. It's, uh, everything's available, and it uses all Adafruit parts, also uh, Emic 2, so I yeah, know uh, Joe yeah. Graham's a judge as well. I'm not silly, you know. I'm trying to win this yeah. thing. So. You're gonna go. Right. You know, you're probably going to space. space. Um, <laughs> well, if I don't go to space, he's about the size of a CubeSat, so I'm gonna send him off. Yeah. Okay. All right, Andrew. Well, thank you so much. Um, send us an email with a link to this, and also um, uh, you get a as seen on the show and tell sticker. Thank you. It's going on. Okay. Thank you so much. Next up, we're gonna go to Lon, and then we're gonna wrap up with C Scott. So Lon, show us your project. I have another quick one. Still working on that uh, uh, sci-fi space helmet costume thing. As remember from last week, we had the brain jack interface for the back. Oh. Now on the front, uh, I have a fake HUD, not a cool HUD like Brian's. Um, 
guys can see that thing. There we go. So it's going to sit on my head like this. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be a foam helmet that's attached to the no microprocessor. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, no, it's but, good. Uh, it's like super simple. We are using lots of uh, Adafruit products. We've got the UV LEDs on there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got white poly battery, and uh, I'm loving the PowerBoost 500. That's a useful thing. So yeah. That's, that's all that's there is good. to it. That took uh, a while for us to get, get perfect, um, and now we use it in everything, too. Yep. So it's going to get, uh, in the final release, obviously everything will be better made, not just prototype parts. Uh, the ink is uh, Sharpie, has a fluorescent pen now called the Neon, and yeah. so we just drew on there. Uh, yeah. That'll be silk screened in the final version, and I'll be putting a piece of plastic at an angle in there uh, to protect my eyes from the UV not yeah. shining right into my pupils. Yeah. That's a good idea. But, uh, yep. Just a quick update I mean, on that. They aren't that UV, by the way. I mean, like, they, they're fluorescent, but they don't... Yeah, they're not very strong on the fluorescent. Uh, I mean, right going there. to a nightclub is, like, way worse for you yep. in many ways. Safety, <laughs> safety third. Yeah. So. yeah but on a, at a convention, you might be wearing something like this for six, seven hours, so yeah. it's probably not a good idea to shine right in your eyes. All right, Lon. Well, there's, I think, maybe some room on there for us, you know, on show and tell sticker, so you get one. Uh, there will be on the back of the helmet for sure. Yeah. Okay. We'll come back when you finish it, too. We'd love to see it. Yeah, that's true. More All right. helmets. All right. And now it's one of my favorite times of the evening. See, Scott, what type of musical thing do you have this week? Uh, well, this is an update on. You know, I'm trying to turn the CS80. In other words, I'm trying to turn that machine there into a box that's about that size there. All right. That's a way of trying. That's nice. <laughs> How's that working out for you? <laughs> but... Um, I've got some boards back. I think I showed this one to you in uh, the layout form. This is the uh, eight voice back plane. It's going to take voice cards and plug in like this. Yeah. And in the midst of making that, I got a user request to make one for the original OBX. Now, its boards are kind of big. So, uh, yeah, I went and made that. This is what they called a tray board. It used a sub chassis. And it's big because the boards mount flat. So ah, the, the trimmer, I see. You know, there's like 21 trimmers on a vintage voice card, so they want to be able to open the hood and, and trim them all out without having to pull a car to put an extender in, etc. So you know, I made these out of nice uh, two and a half millimeter thick, two ounce copper, unlike the originals, which are single sided, you know, 62 mil. Uh, uh, phenolic. Yeah, they should hold up pretty good. But uh, that's it. I don't have anything dazzling to, ah. to send off. Those, those, those circuit boards are dazzling in their hugeness. Yeah. <laughs> Look who you're talking to. This is, you, you're, you're, you're talking to us. We think this is impressive. We like this. But, um, no, I mean, you know, just a couple more, com couple more comments uh, because the one fellow was talking about etching boards. Um, when I was doing etching 30 years ago, what I bought was this big fiber tank. I think it came from Kepro Chemical Company. Uh, they also sold the uh, fair chloride and uh, other things. But I would set it up in the garage and drop four immersion heaters for an aquarium in it, set them for about 115 degrees, let it sit there for about a day because you've got two and a half to three gallons of the stuff and you want it to stabilize. And then to immerse the boards, I had a thing made out of PVC it, it, with just two handles and some slots cut in the PVC at the bottom. Stick your boards in it vertically, drop it down, um, etch for 30 minutes, pull it up, turn the boards over, drop it back down 30 more minutes, and, you know, nice boards came out at the end. Uh, anyway. Yeah. yeah, it's possible. But, uh, you know... You can do that on a smaller scale. Just make sure you use stuff that ferric chloride won't eat because it eats lots of things like clothing. Yeah. Uh, I've ruined many a pair of jeans uh, doing that. Me too. But uh, I did. I've, I've, etched, I've etched 10 mil, 10 mil boards. It's possible. I mean, it's yeah. it's annoying, but you, with practice, you can get to that. You know, you can get to that state. All right. Well, now okay. I'm leaving. I send off for my boards anyway. Okay. Uh, well. Um, don't forget, email supportadafruit.com. You get an as seen on the show until sticker. We're going to ask an engineer in just three minutes or less. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Noah and Pedro. Thank you, Lon. Thank you, Lois. Thank you, Cesar. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Ankit. And thank you, Andrew. Can you have the bot say goodbye? Andrew, is it all possible? Can the bot say anything? Maybe not. Maybe you can say it. 
bot is but, tired. Bot had totally passed out. <laughs> the bot's like, that he's was like, too much excitement. Like, ah, he's ah. Too much excitement. <laughs> He got frozen, so I'm uploading something to him. Hopefully, we'll <laughs> 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 We got some music. Yeah, he's got music. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, I, I found this on the internet the other day. It's a VST plugin for the Roland VP330. It's another one of the key elements of the Vandella sound from the late 70s and early 80s. So, yeah. Oh, I that's nice. We get some yeah. 3D printing. I'm sure Tony's got a cat somewhere. There's a cat meowing. There's printers right. printing. All right, everyone. Thank Make you so much. Party. We'll see you on Show and Tell next week and Ask an Engineer in two minutes. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye. Oh.